in the last class we have seen about the various characteristics and errors in the digital to analog converter now we are going to see about the ic form of the r2r ladder dac okay so we know the r2r ladder dac is a very good digital to analog converter used in everywhere okay so this r2r ladder dac can be available in the ic format which has the ic number ic1408 let us see the pin diagram of the ic1408 it is a 16 pin ic which is in the dip package dual inline package so here from here we will start the pins the pin number one is the output range control and pin two is the ground pin three is negative voltage which is vee and pin four is the current output okay and pin five is the a1 which is the msb bit so which is a 8 bit r to r ladder right so from the a1 to a8 we have the 8 bits okay from the a1 to a8 we have 8 bits so those bits uh, in those bits in that 8 bit digital word a1 will be the msp and a8 will be the lsp and these bits are a1 is given to the fifth pin a2 is given to the sixth pin a3 is given to the seventh pin and a4 is given to the eighth pin like that and ninth pin is given with the a5 and 10th pin is given with the a6 and 11th pin is given with the a7 and 12th pin is given with the a8 which is the lsb and the 13th pin is the vcc and the 14th pin is the plus v reference voltage and 15th pin is the minus v reference voltage so this 14th pin and 15th pin are used to give the reference voltage and 16th pin is a compensation pin these are all the different pins that are present in the ic1408 ic one thing we have to note down is ic1408 is a 8-bit <coughs> digital to analog converter so what is there in the circuit r2r ladder dac is there okay inside the inside the ic we have r2r ladder dac and what is the output of the dac output will be the current not the voltage and then we have to convert this output current into the voltage by using the current to voltage converter what we have discussed in the unit number one okay let us see about this a 8 bit r to r ladder digital to analog converter the ic1408 is a 8 bit r to r ladder digital to analog converter and which provides a current output and then this current can be converted into the voltage using the i2v converter this current can be converted into voltage by using current to voltage converter and that it is compatible the output is compatible for the both cmos logic and the ttl logic cmos logic as well as the transistor transistor logics too it can give input for the both logics and a1 is the msp bit and a8 is the lsb bit least significant bit in the binary vote and output current is given as the output current of the ic is given as i0 is equal to v reference divided by the r14 v reference divided by r14 into a1 by 2 a2 by 4 a3 by 8 plus a4 by 16 plus a5 by 32 a6 by 64 a7 by 128 and a8 by 256 i0 is equal to v, re v reference by r14 so into a1 by 2 so if you observe this is looking like a standard equation for the digital to unlock converter so b1 into 2 power minus 1 b2 into 2 power minus 2 like that here a1 by 2 can be written as a1 into 2 power minus 1 plus a2 into 2 power minus 2 like that we can write okay here v reference is the reference voltage or full scale output voltage of the digital to unlock converter where r14 is the external resistance that we are going to connect to that 14th pin so here if you see the internal black diagram of the ic1408 so msp bit is a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 and lsp is the a8 bit and this is the current switch section i0 is the output current which is going into the ic and number one pin the pin number one is a range control and here these current switches are given to the r2r ladder 
network and then this r to r ladder network has been driven by the current source it is a reference current amplifier this is a current source generator so which provides a current to our r to r ladder network okay so actually here using inverted r to r ladder so that's why the current will be the input this current can be generated using the plus r minus reference voltages this plus r minus reference voltage will generate the current and here we we will have the basic circuit used to operate the ic okay this is about the black diagram and here the pin number one and the pin number 14 15 are the reference voltages and pin number 13 is the vcc and pin number 16, 16 is the compensation pin which is given to the reference current generation section and then fourth pin is the output pin second pin is the ground pin and from the fifth pin to twelfth pin are the binary order let us see the typical circuit of the ic1408 in this typical circuit uh, we can see a1 to a8 are the 8 bit digital input binary word and from the 16th pin to minus ve we are connecting one 15 picofarad capacitor and then the pin 3 has been given to the ve terminal and the pin number 1 is given to the ground terminal and pin number 2 is also given to the ground terminal and the 15th pin has been given to the ground through the resistor 2.5 kilo ohms and then from the fourth pin we are getting the output current and this output current has been converted into the output voltage by using one current to voltage converter using the operational amplifier and here the feedback resistor used is 2.5k and at the output of this i2v converter we are getting the output voltage and for the 14th pin we are using a resistor r14 which is connected to the plus 5 volts and the 13th pin is the vcc terminal okay like this we can connect the ic1408 in order to convert the 8 bit binary word into the analog voltage v0 so if you see the characteristics of ic1408 the reference current is 2 milliampere and the supply voltage is plus 5 volts VCC and the minus 15 volts VEE. We can give the voltages between the plus 5 volts for the VCC and minus 15 volts for the VEE terminal. And the settling time is 300 nanoseconds. Within the 300 nanoseconds itself, the output will be will become stable and then gives the output. And the full scale output current can be given as the maximum current is 1.992 milliampere. And the accuracy of this IC1408 is 0.19 percent. Okay, this is about the monolithic IC1408, which is a R2R ladder DAC, which is a 8-bit DAC, okay, which uses the R2R network inside of it. Next, we will see about the high-speed sample and pole circuit. High-speed sample and pole circuit. The name itself indicates that sampling and hold sample means taking and then it is holding that voltage so the circuit which takes the output voltage which captures the voltage and then holds until it it used those circuits are called as sample and hold circuits okay the function of the sample and hold circuits is to sample an analog input signal and hold this value over a certain length of time for the subsequent processing so the sample and hold circuits will samples the signal will samples the analog signal and it will hold that or store that value until the subsequent processing until certain length of time it will store after that it will leave so let us see a simple high speed sample and hold circuit here you can see this is the analog input and this is the analog output and this switch is called a sample and hold switch sample and hold switch and here so this is called as a holding capacitor ch and the sample command from the clock so for this switch this switch will be operated by using the clock signal when the clock is one the switch will process when the clock is zero the switch will open like that okay like that it will samples the analog signal when the clock signal is one the switch will be closed at that point of time this analog input voltage will be entered into the capacitor and then this analog voltage will flow to output side simultaneously the same analog input voltage will stored in the capacitor or holding capacitor okay when the clock pulse becomes zero 
then the switch will opens okay thereafter whatever the voltage stored in the holding capacitor will be transferred to the output okay this is called sampling and holding here sampling means storing the analog input voltage in the capacitor okay and then holding after that it will use the analog output voltage when the switch is open when the clock is zero okay so let us see the analog input and its sampling this is the analog input signal just we are assuming and here the sampled output will be like this the sampling will be taken at a certain time intervals so here and here after this one with certain intervals we are captured the analog input voltage we have captured the analog input voltage and the analog hold input will be like this because the capacitor is charged with that input voltage right because of that we are getting this type of output across the capacitor okay so this is a sampled input and this one is the analog hold input whatever stored in the capacitor analog input sampling so this sampling rate must be high in order to reproduce the signal exactly at the output side okay let us see the sampling rate if the sampling rate is equal to 1 kilohertz then this will be the input signal which is a somewhat sinus order signal we can say here the sampling rate is 1 hertz only 1 hertz so that it was taken some samples here but the sampling step size if you see it is not exactly with the not exactly similar with the input signal what we have so if you give this type of signal at the receiver end we may not produce the exact signal at the output side okay so we will get the distorted output but if you see this if we increase the sampling rate the sampling rate is 2 hertz here so that we have taken the number of samples for the input signal and these sample steps are somewhat looking identical to the exact input signal in exact input analog signal so that if you reproduce the signal at the output side then the reproduced signal will be somewhat looking similar to the input signal okay so by taking the more number of samples we can perfectly reproduce our input at the output side okay so that the sampling rate must be high we are going to see about the switched op amp based sample and hold circuit in this sample and hold circuit switched op amp means we are using some op amp in the sample and hold circuit okay so when the mast transistor is in the saturation region which means that is it is in on state the channel is pinched off the channel in the mast transistor will be pinched off and disconnected from the drain therefore if the hold capacitor is connected to the drain of the mast transistor charge in junction will only go to the source junction okay therefore if the hold capacitor is connected to the drain of mast transistor charge injection will only go to the source source junction by leaving the drain unaffected let us see this is a simple sample and hold circuit here this is the sop and this one is a buffer and here this is a sample and hold switch control which is driven by the jfet and this is the holding capacitor ch and this jfet will be operated with a sample and hold control signal which is a clock signal when the clock signal is high then the jfet will be on and then the vi will be forwarded to the output side and this uh, when the clock signal is high then the jfet will be on and this signal will be transferred to the output side through this output buffer and then the same input signal will be stored in the capacitor ch mass capacitor ch and when the clock is zero jfet will be offed at that time the ch will gives the output voltage sample and hold circuit using sop this is a circuit using sop sample and hold circuit using switched op amp this is a switched op amp which has a feedback tube and vi in is applied here and then the ch is a mass capacitor ch which is also called as a holding capacitor and this one is a buffer and during the sample mode sample mode the sop behaves just like a regular op amp during the sampling mode so sampling in the sense storing the vi in signal into the capacitor okay at that time the sop behaves just like a regular op amp in which the value of the output 
flows to the value of the input output value will be equal to the input value and then it will stored in the capacitor 2 during the hold mode the mass transistor at the output of the sop are turned off the master transistor at the output of the sop this one will be turned off while they are still operating in the saturation and this will be turned off while it is still operating in the saturation thus preventing any channel charge from flowing into the output of sop so during the hold mode the mass transistor at the output node of the sop are turned off while they are still operating in saturation thus preventing any channel charge from flowing into the output of the SOP okay so no current will flow into the SOP again okay as this uh, output to mass transistor will be switched off at that time no current will flow into the SOP section in addition the SOP is shut off and the output is held at high impedance so at that time what happens as this mass transistor has been switched off output will be at high impedance stage which means that open circuit between the between the, this terminal to that terminal okay allowing the charge of the ch to be preserved through the whole time therefore whatever the charge stored in the ch will be uh, will be preserved or stored in the ch only okay other hand the output buffer of this sample and hold circuit is always operational during the sample and hold mode is always providing the voltage of the ch voltage on the hold capacitor to the output of the sample and hold circuit on the other hand the output buffer of this sample and hold circuit always operational during the sample and hold mode and is always providing the voltage on the hold capacitor to the output of the sample and hold circuit let us see some circuit which uses the mosfet as a switch the above circuit shows a sample and hold circuit with a mosfet using as a switch acting as the sampling device and also consists of a holding capacitor cs to store the sample values until the next sample comes in until the next sample comes in so what happens here when the vin is present and the clock signal is one then what happens this mos switch will on and then vin will be stored into the capacitor cs and then this uh, output will be present through the bifet op amp whenever the clock signal is goes low this will be stored whatever the charge stored in the cs will be holded and then after the next clock pulse occurs whatever the st charge stored in this capacitor will be transferred to the output and then the again the vin will be stored into the capacitor cs the next sample will be stored into the capacitor cs okay like that it is happening okay i will explain you one more time so uh, when the switch is on the input signal will be stored into the storage capacitor or holding capacitor and then in the next clock signal this whatever the sample stored in this capacitor will be transferred to the output and then the next sample will be stored into the capacitor like that it is happening this is about the sample and hold circuit different types of sample and hold circuits